Memories of Charlie Connerly, Jake Gibb, and Archie Manning. Memories of six SEC championships under John Vaught and a rich bowl history. But it's been 23 long years between titles for the Rebels, and 1986 only appeared to be another season of modest hope. Early losses to Arkansas and Georgia seemed to have Ole Miss reeling, but with a spirit reminiscent of the glory years, Billy Brewer's team rebounded with three straight wins. Then came arch-rival LSU, a game few gave the Rebels a chance to win. It'll be a 30-yard field goal try. It'll come from the near hash mark with 14 seconds left to go. Holding is Todd Tomlinson, the snapper, Joe Champion. Here's the snap, the kick on its way. It is! No good! It's no good! It's no good! It's no good! He missed it! He pushed it wide to the left! He pushed it wide to the left! He missed it! The Rebels are going to win! Oh, yeah! Suddenly, the Rebels were 3-1 and one in the conference, and the once impossible dream of an SEC title is within reach. But the next step is defending champion Tennessee, and the Vols would like nothing better than ending their season of disappointment as the spoiler. TNT presents Super Football Saturday. Today, the Tennessee Volunteers take on the 20th ranked Rebels of Ole Miss. Today's game is brought to you by Buick. For traditional comfort, technical innovation, and for a real commitment to quality, come to Buick, where better really matters. And by Coors and Coors Light. Beers with a difference worth tasting. From Memorial Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi, the Volunteers of Tennessee and the Rebels of Ole Miss. It's going to be about 60 degrees today, partly cloudy, a good day for Southeastern Conference football. Hello, everybody. This is Bob Neal along with Tim Foley. And what a difference a year makes. Last year, when we televised Tennessee Ole Miss, it was in Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. The Volunteers were on their way to winning the Southeastern Conference Championship. But this year, it's the Rebels of Ole Miss, 3-1 and one in the conference, still a contender for the SEC crown and certainly a major contender for many bowls and Tim Foley it has not been an easy season for Ole Miss they did not have the best of starts they've had some injuries but the Ole Miss team has hung in there showed some character and, and what's been the story behind the Rebels well they found themselves an offense they're starting to run the ball inside with Mickles and Dentley Willie Goodlow has done a great job replacing Sean Sykes and, and they've got a quarterback the experience that Mark Young has has gained during the season is starting to tell now and it's a valuable asset but today Mississippi is going to live and die with its defense as it has done. Early in the year, they lost Everett Flakes. They lost Fuzzy Huddleston. Joe Nathan Shelley went down. They had some injury problems, but unlike Tennessee, they've been able to replace those players with performers that are doing an adequate job, and especially in the secondary. You've got Don Price, who's come in, redshirt freshman. The team with Stevon Moore on the corners. You give Mississippi a couple of best corners in the league, I think. And, of course, the leadership up front comes from Mike Fitzsimmons and Jeff Rod. For the University of Tennessee, it's been a year of near misses. Were it not for a few single plays, and I know if is for those who are hoping to win, but for not for a few single plays, they could have had a great year. No question about it. A missed field goal against Georgia Tech, a blocked punt against Army, and we saw the Mississippi State game, a great play by Don Smith. But Tennessee now has been plagued by injuries all year long. They're as healthy as they've been all year this afternoon, and I think they're ready to explode. As Coach Major said, three more wins for Tennessee. They have three games left. They could have a winning season. They're a dangerous team, but Ole Miss is hungry, and they hope they're bowl-bound. We'll be back for the kickoff in just a moment, but right now, let's return to our studios in Atlanta. All right, Bob, thank you very much. Of course, Ole Miss just one of four teams right now with just one loss in that SEC race. If things would fall into place, as many as six teams could end up tied for the Southeastern Conference title when the season is over. That would make the Sugar Bowl a very difficult choice for the bowl committee, but it is their choice. And you would tend to think that they would pick Auburn as things stand now because their record is the best overall. They have the fewest losses and the highest national ranking, and that would be where the Sugar Bowl committee would lean. Three majors. 
was a 1957 graduate of Tennessee and the coach of the year last year. It's been a tough year for Coach Majors, but we talked with him last night. You could see the fire in his eyes, and he says he's starting to see it again in the eyes of his Tennessee players. Three more wins, they could finish the season with a 6-5 and five record. And now the Rebels of Ole Miss. They are led by Billy Brewer, who graduated from Ole Miss in 61, his fourth year now. He's 21-19-3. It has been a tough year for Ole Miss. They have been under investigation by the NCAA. Ole Miss had several players who were suspended by the university. The NCAA granted them permission to play and be eligible in this game only yesterday. So for Ole Miss, it's been a year of character building, and they're still in the hunt for a conference championship. We'll have the kickoff from Memorial Stadium right after this. Built my first model. Tennessee won the toss and has elected to receive. So Ole Miss will be kicking off to the University of Tennessee, the deep back number seven, a speedster, a junior college transfer. His name is Anthony Miller. He averages 21.6 yards per kickoff return. Bill Smith, number 10 with a kickoff. Strong leg drives Miller into the end zone with the bobble. He'll down it for a touchback. And the University of Tennessee volunteers will take the ball on offense from their own 20-yard line. They are led at quarterback by the most efficient passer in the Southeastern Conference, Jeff Francis. The key men there are going to be the receivers. Anthony Miller, the man who took that kickoff reception, is really a dangerous player. Keith Davis is back from injury. On the Tennessee offensive line, Wilkerson is probably their most dangerous offensive lineman. Harry Galbraith, the left guard, also a tough one. First down 10, Tennessee. Incomplete, intended for 32, Charles Wilson. It'll be second down 10. Good quarterback pressure by the defensive end, number 80, Wesley Walls. The other defensive end is number 90, Ben Morris, but that up front group is led by Mike Fitzsimmons from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, all the way at Oxford, Mississippi. The linebackers are good when Jeff Harrod, but they lost their best linebacker, Fuzzy Huddleston, during the Georgia game. Don Price, the man Tim Foley was telling you about on our opening, he has stepped in at the corner. He has three interceptions and has performed very well. On second down 10, Tennessee is going to run the ball to the 26-yard line goes the sophomore Keith Davis coming back from the injury. He's tackled by 31, Rodney Lowe. Mississippi's giving it a little bit different look on defense. Bob, Ben Morris usually plays behind Wesley Walls. They've taken Wesley Walls, and you saw he got good pressure on that first snap, and it came from the weak side linebacker spot. A little bit of a shift. It's third down, about four. Francis throws it complete to Clint Scales for the first down. And he goes out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Don Price covering on the play. Tennessee converts the first down. Now Don Price is filling in for the injured Joe Nathan Shelley, probably Mississippi's best defensive back going into the season. Talking to Carl Torbush, the defensive coordinator, and Ron Case, the secondary coach from Mississippi, they said they were thought that Don might play as a junior or as a senior, but he's been forced into action early, and you'll find him playing a little loose. That's why Tennessee dumped that first one in front of him. On the first down from the 35-yard line, play fake. It is incomplete. Was the ball in the air? Yes, it was intercepted at the 43. The man with the ball is Don Price. Number 45, the cornerback Tim was talking about. It hit Keith Davis and popped into the air. A two-deep zone here, Bob. Receiver drifts past Price. Now Price comes back and starts to look to the inside. The ball is thrown by Francis, dropped by Davis. The ball's popped up in the air. Don Price converging on the football. Looked like he did not catch the ball from this point of view. Big turnover, however, in the eyes of the officials. It belongs to the Rebels from their 44 on first down. This is good low to the 33-yard line. Let's just see that once again, Tim. Let's see. There's the ball right at the top of the screen. Ball he tipped it? up in the air, grabs under it. He's under it with his left hand, and it looks like it slid out, hit the ground. So that's a big break for Mississippi there. And they move it to the 34-yard line, where it will be first down again. But officially, that's the fourth interception for Don Price since he took over for Joe Nathan Shelley. 
In motion, J.R. Ambrose, first and ten from the 34. The handoff to the fullback, Joe Nichols. Let's take a look at that Ole Miss offensive unit. Mark Young's the quarterback, but the key man is J.R. Ambrose. He was said to have been one of the players. The university never did release the names of them, but said by sources to be one of the players who had been suspended by the university in the NCAA investigation, but was ruled eligible today. Todd Irvin, perhaps their best offensive lineman. They like to run to the right side. Mario Perry is the tight end. It will be second down seven. Ole Miss from just outside the 30-yard line of Tennessee. Opening quarter. Tennessee with an interception. Young throws it complete to Ambrose. Hard. He goes down at the 23, and he just got across the stick. It will be a first down, a gain of eight. He was tackled by 54 Jones and 52 Milton Gordon. Let's look at that Tennessee defensive line. The defensive line, first of all, has been beset by injuries. The missing name primarily there is Richard Cooper, a great dominating player who's been injured and out all year long. So it is a makeshift line. Tracy Hayworth, a true freshman, the big play man, is Dale Jones. The leading tackler is Ziegler. And Charles Davis is the leader at strong safety in the Tennessee secondary. First down, 10 Ole Miss. From the 23 of Tennessee, they give to Goodlow. He gets to the 17-yard line where freshman Milton Gordon, 52, makes the stop for the Volunteers. We're also seeing something a little bit different from Tennessee on defense. One of the problems that uh, Ron Zook feels like they've had, the deep, uh, uh, along with Ken Donahue and Dick Bumpus and Mel Fouts, the coaches on the Tennessee's defense, is that they've been running away from Dale Jones a lot. He's not had the opportunity to make as many plays as they'd like him to make. They're going to slide him inside, and he's going to be in a lot more action. They've got a unique look, almost three linebackers in the middle of the field as you look down there on a second down four Ole Miss decides to call a timeout we are 12 21 remaining in the first quarter from Jackson Mississippi it's a scoreless game but Ole Miss on the drive this is Super Football Saturday on TNT statistics for the Tennessee defensive unit on the field right now eighth in the league in rushing defense and Ole Miss inside the 20-yard line at the 17 with a second down and four. And Willie Goodlow and Joe Mickles are in the backfield. Goodlow, number 24. He gets the ball and drives. Near the 12-yard line, I believe he got the first down. Ziegler, 49, and 90. Marion Hobby with the tackle, but it is a first down for the Rebels of Ole Miss. Johnny Majors looks on, obviously concerned about this early turn of events good job of blocking by the Mississippi offensive line and Willie Goodlow has been a tremendous addition in the offensive backfield for Mississippi great balance a good receiver coming out of the backfield also first down 10 Rebels from the 12 Ambrose in motion Goodlow again to the two-yard line Willie Goodlow tackled by Marion Hobby and I believe he's got enough for another Rebel first down. It's going to be right at the first down marker. Okay, we're going to watch this again. You see Dale Jones clearing your picture to the left. He's mirroring J.R. Ambrose, which gives a little bit of room to Willie Look Goodlow to cut back against the grain. We've got a Dale Jones iso. They figure the ball's going to be around J.R. Ambrose, and they want Dale Jones around him. Unfortunately for Tennessee on that particular play, Ambrose a decoy in a good gain by Mississippi. It's always, a, it's always, this is a first down by about half the length of the ball. It's always a chess game, and that time the offense beat the defense in the guessing game. And Billy Brewer, who's just had a difficult year, he's had personal problems, his team has been under investigation, they've had an in-house Ole Miss investigation, the, uh, several personal tragedies on the football team with relatives of players and one thing or another, but here they are, threatening to score, threatening to contend for the conference championship. They are three and one in the SEC. This is first and goal from the two. Fumble in the end zone out of the hands of Tony Dentley, but it's after he broke the plane, and it is a touchdown, Ole Miss. Ball popped loose, but they say Dentley crossed the line. Good explosion by the Mississippi offensive line and a nice job of Dentley finding the hole. It Here's seemed the point as after attempt. Excuse me. Good. We'll see it again from. Uh... Here's the point after. We'll go back and look at it again. He dropped the ball as he came across. Ziegler may have hit him. 49. 
Dentley looks to me clearly across the goal line before the ball came out. Good call by the officials. And after a questionable interception as to whether or not the ball had hit the ground, Ole Miss scores the touchdown, leads 7 to nothing. And for Ole Miss on this interception, here's Jeff Francis rolling to throw. And Johnny Major says what Jeff Francis does best is not make mistakes. He puts the ball in the money. Keith Davis knocks it up in the air. Really reminiscent of a play that happened in the first quarter of the Army game where Panuska was almost in the end zone, tipped the ball up, and our, instead of having a touchdown, Tennessee had an interception. There, Price reacted to the ball, got his hand underneath it, but it seemed to slip away and hit the ground before he covered it. Ready for the second. Ole Miss kickoff. Bill Smith, who's normally the punter, always kicks off. He has such a strong leg, but this one's not going to carry into the end zone. It is going to bounce out of bounds, and there will be a penalty option here coming up for Tennessee. So a little bit of a question as to whether that ball was intercepted. As you saw on our replays, you look at the story of the drive there of 44 yards, it looked as though Price had it, but then as he rolled over, the ball hit the ground. And, you know, in talking to Johnny Majors, uh, of course, to look back over Tennessee's season. What happened? Well, one thing that happened was they've just been decimated, as you mentioned, by injuries. The other thing that's happened, you've just seen a good example of, and it's something that they don't be able, they can't escape the, uh, the bad luck which is following them around and zapping them at least twice or three times during every game, and that's a perfect example of, uh, really, in one play, that depicted Tennessee's season to this point. They move the ball back to the 30-yard line where Smith will attempt the kickoff again. It's going to come down to number seven, Anthony Miller, the junior college transfer. Miller down hard at the 33. Hello. It looked like Tony Bennett, 89, was one of them down there. 23 A.D. Matthews also there. <laughs> what a hit. There's Tony Bennett, and A.D. Matthews was the man who made the, the initial tackle, but you'll be seeing 89 Tony Bennett making a lot of plays from my favorite Mississippi town, Alligator, Mississippi. I'd said it was so small, the <laughs> zip code ended in a fraction, and a gentleman sent me his business card from Alligator and said, no, it has one on it. <laughs> First down 10, Tennessee from the 33, Panuska and Charles Wilson in the backfield now. Panuska number 36, Wilson with the handoff. Turns the corner, gets four or five yards before he's knocked out of bounds by 27. Stevon Moore, they will spot the ball at the 39-yard line. They'll give him a gain of six on the play. And this is really the first time all year, with the exception of their opening game, that Tennessee has had Charles Wilson, Keith Davis, and William Howard all healthy. They're ready to go offensively. They've got their people wound up. Three receivers, 87 clink scales, seven Miller, four Terrence Cleveland end on second down four for Tennessee. But they run the ball to Wilson. The ball oh. came loose. It was fallen on by Tennessee. The play was still alive. He was close to a first down. Pete Panuska was carrying. I think it was Harad who may have knocked it out of there. Well, Harrod's always going to be around the football there. He's getting a hit. Now watch Howard Moss. Howard Moss comes in and looks like he, he drills it out. Tennis, Mississippi is a defense that's around the football, much like Tennessee, but they're just real aggressive players. They're awfully young, too. Only two seniors that are starters, Bob, so most of this group will be back next year for Mississippi. The Ole Miss Rebels have gone a long time, 17 quarters, without yielding a rushing touchdown. Third down two, conversion situation for the Volunteers. Francis is going to throw it quickly. Gets it complete to Miller. Miller is hit and knocked back, but he got the first down to the 45-yard line. Don Price and Anthony Miller are going to spend the afternoon together. You can bet on that. Miller a little shaken. Seems to be okay. You're watching Anthony Miller here. They like to get him the ball in a hurry on the outside or go deep with him. He's dangerous once he has the ball. Good job of converging there by Howard Moss. Gave Miller nowhere to go and set him up for Don Price. Keith Davis, 28-32 Wilson in the backfield in the eye formation for the Volunteers. First and 10 at the 45. It is Keith Davis. Across the 50 to the 49-yard line, Coach Johnny Major said Keith Davis is playing at about 85%. Let's go to our studios in Atlanta and Kevin Slick. His second down for Tennessee at the 49 of Ole Miss. Jeff Francis gives to Davis. 
couple of yards, no more, to about the 47 or 48 yard line. Speaking of bowl games, Kevin talking about bowl scouts with Indiana. There are eight bowls represented here in Jackson today. Looking at Ole Miss, the Hula, Blue Bonnet, Peach Liberty, Sugar Sun, All America, which will be here on the Superstation on New Year's Eve with yours truly Tim Foley and Paul Horning and the Hall of Fame Bowl that's in Tampa this year. And that was the farthest thing from Mississippi's mind after we saw them against Georgia and Tulane. Another conversion opportunity for the Volunteers. Third down two. Francis is going to throw for it again, or at least attempt. He overthrows his receiver. The intended receiver, 5'9", Terrence Cleveland, needed to be about seven feet to grab that one, I think. So the Volunteers do not convert, and they'll turn the ball over. They've been throwing the quick out to the wide receiver. They tried to get the strong safety biting on the wide receiver to open up that slot area, but a good job by Novlin coming over to cover up that hole didn't allow Francis to stick it in there. Two out of five for only 12 yards is Francis with one interception. Myers, 25, and 24 Goodlow are back deep for Ole Miss. Here's Garmin. Hits it from just inside. That's 45. Wants to get it down inside the 10. Does. Goodlow at the 5. At the 12, and down he goes. Willie Goodlow is tackled by 62, Nick Zacchino. Sounds like an Italian food. 42-yard punt, 7-yard return. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. <laughs> Tears met the Ole Miss Rebels in 1951. It didn't figure to be a defensive struggle. Both teams played high-scoring offense, but it was a defensive play by future Hall of Famer Doug Atkins that turned the momentum to Tennessee, protecting a slim 5-point lead in the third quarter. Atkins intercepted this Rebel pass to set up a ball touchdown. General Neyland's team continued to a 46-21 win and an eventual national championship, 1951. Saw Doug Atkins the other night at an honorary dinner for Lindsey Nelson in Knoxville, and Doug's still in great shape. First down 10, Ole Miss from just about the 12-yard line. As they try to run it with Nichols, they get nothing on that play. 54, Dale Jones is there. And that's... An unfamiliar place to find Dale Jones. As we talked about earlier, they're going to be placing Dale Jones often in the middle of that defense. He's roaming free almost with no specific assignment except get to the football. Dale Jones is playing hard. His intensity is good, but his statistics are not like they were last year. Second down nine. Ole Miss leading 7-0. 8.04 to go first quarter. Mark Young. Looks like he's going to attempt his second pass of the day. He does. In and out of the hands of Ricky Myers, the senior from Bassfield, Mississippi. Ricky has 27 catches and five touchdowns. Should have had that one for a first down. Take a look at 54. You can watch Dale Jones here on pass coverage. It's a two-deep zone. He's almost doing the job of a cornerback there. Now reading back into the quarterback, trying to react to the football. And the way things were falling last year for Dale, that ball would have bounced to the right instead of the left, and he would have had an inter interception. But he's been a big play guy for three years at Tennessee. Field position possession here. It's third down nine from the 14-yard line for Ole Miss. And the penalty marker drops. The time clock had not Back run down. Maybe some motion down there. The official, Robert Aie in the white hat. Robert Ia, by the way, is refereeing his final game as a referee in the SEC after 20 exceptional years. We congratulate him on a, a great job, a thankless job in the eyes of coaches and fans. Well, I shouldn't say coaches because coaches actually appreciate what these men do, even though they argue a long time. But one of the best in the country retiring, Robert Ia. We're going to pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. This is Superstation WTBS Atlanta from Turner Broadcasting System. Now it's third down and 14. Ole Miss, and they just run it up the middle. To the 15-yard line goes Mickles, and Bill Smith will come in to punt the ball. Bill Smith is the best man in the country probably to be punting from this situation. He is fourth in the nation in punting right now, leads the SEC, averages 44.4, and at one time had a 32-game streak of 50-yard or more punts. That streak ended against Southwest Louisiana. Smith gets away a boomer. It is Thomas T.D. Woods at his 36. Down he goes at the 38-yard line. Hit by 86, James Smith. It'll be Tennessee ball when we return. 7-18 to go. Here in the first quarter, it was a 48-yard punt by Bill Smith. 
in Madison, Wisconsin. Watch this. You could be the judge here. Was he in for the touchdown? Workman trying to get a second where the ball is when his knee touches the ground. Didn't look like he was in. The official said yes, 17-0. Let's go to Jackson. All right, back at Jackson, high above Memorial Stadium. Bob Neal, Tim Foley with you. 7-18 to go first quarter. Rebels are leading, 7-0. There's where we are. I mean high. When we say high above, we're on the third floor here, folks. Rebels are leading and looking strong defensively in the first quarter. Panuska, 36, 25 Miller in the backfield for Tennessee on the first down. Following the 48-yard Bill Smith punt. Play fake to Miller. Gets to the 40 and no more. Knocked out of bounds by 45, Don Price. And this is a play Tennessee likes to run, Tim, but it appears, at least at this point, that Ole Miss has it defensed. We're going to see it again. And uh, Miller takes a step, now comes back. Look at Bruce Wilkerson, number 68, trying to get out there, but who's that, Lopez Jones? Just no way that he's going to let that tackle out to block Price. Price reacts on the ball, Moss there, and just beautifully played by Mississippi's defense. Second down, eight volunteers. They are at the 40-yard line. Ole Miss leading 7 to nothing. There was contact there by the nose guard, Daryl Smith, 53. Interesting point. While they discuss this, maybe we could replay this. I'm going to talk to you about something that's good coaching. Todd look, Kirk's the center. We'll 66. look at it again. You'll watch the Mississippi nose guard jump. As soon as he jumps, the center snaps the ball. Todd Kirk snaps the ball. Wise play. Francis kneels down. He catches the guy offside. Too often, the center allows the man to go back on the other side of the line of scrimmage and get set up. Way to go, Todd. Good ball. Encroachment, defense. And they move it out to the 45-yard line, where it now becomes second down three, and the running backs for Tennessee are freshman Vando Davis, number 29, from Wilmington, Delaware, and 25, Miller, the senior from Nashville. Here's Vando Davis. Driving to the 49-yard line, close to and possibly a first down. 31, Rodney Lowe with the stop for the Rebels of Ole Miss. And it's a lovely day for football here in Jackson. It's been cold here like it has been in much of the country, and particularly in the Mid-South, but it's warming up today to someplace in the low to middle 60s, overcast skies, but pretty good flying weather for Air Foley, I'd say. No question about it. Came over here the other night. A little stormy around Orlando and Gainesville, Ooh. but... <laughs> Got past that, and you don't like it, Bob. <laughs> Excitement. Of, it's kind of a light show. Yes, yeah, star staring down at you. It is a Tennessee first down to the 48-yard line, and there's Billy Brewer, who's overcome so much this year, but uh, he's got true grit. That's one thing you can say about Billy Brewer. You can also say he was a great player here at his alma mater and a successful coach with his team battling for the conference championship with a three-and-one mark. Two games remaining. Anthony Miller. About nine yards to the 43-yard line of Ole Miss. Rodney Lowe with the stop again, number 31. Any way you can get the ball into the hands of Anthony Miller, you want to do. Nice job by Timmy Hendricks, too, on that play and the tight end, keeping Tony Bennett from working his way upfield. The Mississippi secondary playing rather loose there, expecting a play pass in that particular down. It'll be second down one. They spot it at the 41-and-a-half-yard line of Ole Miss. Panuska, Wilson in the backfield. Francis with an audible. Short drop. Saw something. Hits right out of the arms of Anthony Miller. Hit him right in the chest. You're going to see a lot of the checkoff plays from the Tennessee quarterback today, as, as is Tennessee's tradition, really. Yeah, now, if that was the first pass of the game, Anthony Miller would have caught it, just as he did on the first play of the game. And uh, But what starts to happen after a while, he starts hearing those footsteps a little bit. He's been racked a couple of times very solidly, and he wants to catch the ball and get going. And that time, he tried to get it in gear a little bit too fast. It is third down one. Tennessee trailing 7-0, 5.49 to go, first quarter. Hand off to Wilson. Tennessee runs for the first down inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. That's the first time I think that Tennessee's run for the first down on one of those conversions. Jeff Francis has been throwing for it at least most of the time. Mississippi's been doing a pretty strong job so far in the game on first down, putting Tennessee in passing situations. 
that time Mississippi played again loose on defense. They didn't want to give him the quick touchdown. Volunteers on the drive from the 37 of Ole Miss. First down. They continue to go with Panuska and Wilson in the backfield. Charles Wilson. Excellent blocking. And he gets to the 25 and a Tennessee first down. 12-yard gain. Had a big hole, too. Very good block by Panuska what? on Fitzsimmons. Watch this now. Watch Bruce Wilkerson, number 68 there. Has his hat on his man, takes his man all the way back, turns him to the inside, walled off any kind of pursuit. What a block. And that's going to be a first-round draft choice in the, uh, in the NFL draft, number 68, Bruce Wilkerson. 25-yard line, first down, Tennessee, driving. Hand off to Wilson. Another hold, he gets to the 15 and inside the 15, tripped up by number 80, Wesley Walls. You saw Ole Miss shifting to the strength of the Tennessee offense that time, but Tennessee still managed to get the yardage. Watch this again, Bob. Just another picture-perfect job. Watch Wilkerson on Mike Fitzsimmons, just straight ahead. He blew him off the ball, got him off balance, and that was it. Cleared him out. Fitzsimmons has come to the sideline. I wonder if he might be nicked. Fitzsimmons, a key player, the senior, 270-pound left tackle. There's Wilkerson, who's matched up with Fitzsimmons. First down, 10, Tennessee at the 15. Wilson tries the left side, gets to about the 10-yard line. This drive started at the Tennessee 38-yard line after the Bill Smith punt. Time remaining in the first quarter. Wilkerson has, has really been a big part in this drive, just cleaning out the right side of that line. And in the, what Fitzsimmons is going to have to try to do, or the defensive coordinator, Torbush, is going to start moving that line a little bit, get him a little movement, because if he stands still, Wilkin, Wilkerson is going to kill him. Second down six from the 11. Wilson. To the nine, not much more. 34, Robert Smith. A junior linebacker with the play for Ole Miss. So it is going to bring up a third down and about five for the Volunteers. And as you saw graphically displayed moments ago, Ole Miss has not given up a rushing touchdown in 17 quarters. Miller and Cleveland split wide to the left side. Clean scales to the right. Clean scales the better possession receiver. They go to Keith Davis, stopped at the line of scrimmage. Jeff Harrod and Robert Smith, the linebackers, with the play for the Ole Miss Rebs, and you see why they haven't given up a rushing touchdown in a long time. That's four-plus ball games. And there you see number 34, Robert Thunder Smith, Harrod and Smith, and here they come. Up through the inside, make the penetration, make the stop. Smith has really been a pleasant surprise for Mississippi on defense. A fullback last year that combined with uh, Sean Sykes, I think Moss Point, right? High school. Moved him over to defense, done an admirable job over there. It'll be a 27-yard attempt for Rebays, who's only 7 out of 14 this year. But he hits this one, and Tennessee gets on the board with a 27-yard Carlos Reves field goal. 2.33 to go in the first quarter, and now it's Rebels 7 and Volunteers 3. So the Rebels give up a long drive to the Volunteers, but once they get inside the 15-yard line, the Rebs stiffen. Tennessee has to settle for a field goal. And Mississippi's confidence has really grown on defense. Uh, indicative of that is that goal line stand they had last week against, or two weeks ago, excuse me, against LSU. First and goal on the six-inch line, and LSU doesn't is not able to penetrate. A couple of big plays from uh, from their defensive backs tried to go over the top on the first play. And next play, Howard Moss kind of almost blitzed on his own and uh, stopped an option, forced LSU to th throw on third down. And but that's the kind of guttiness that this defense has displayed as long as we've been watching them, and I think that's you know a reflection of their coaches. Speaking of the defense of Ole Miss. Uh, Tim, I understand Joe Nathan Shelley, who was injured in the game we televised against Georgia, may see some spot play today. What did Carl Torbush tell you about that? Well, I think he, I think he will. I talked to Joe Nathan down there on the field, and he said he felt pretty good. His knee, left knee was hev heavily taped, but uh, he seemed to move pretty well. And I think they plan on using him, Bob, in five defensive back situations, or maybe even a six defensive back situation where they're planning on blitzing uh, Howard Moss or Matthews. 
J.R. Ambrose. No, he goes to Willie Goodlow instead, number 24. Goodlow in traffic gets it out to about the 32 or 33 yard line. He is hit by number 20, Charles Benton. And Ole Miss with pretty good field position on that kickoff return out at their own 32 yard line will be first down 10, leading 7 3, 225 to go first quarter. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you from Memorial Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi. You know, something I just found out, Bob, that Fitzsimmons did not practice this week. You know, we saw him getting blocked by Wilkerson, did not practice this week, has a pinched nerve in his shoulder, and he's playing like it, like he doesn't have a lot of strength there. First down, 10 Rebels. Play fake on the option. Down hard goes Ambrose. Gain of about one. Victor Peppers with the tackle. I saw uh, Mike Fitzsimmons yesterday when... Billy Brewer brought his club over to Memorial Stadium just to walk on the field. He didn't work out because of the rainy conditions at the time. And he also looked as though he was not feeling well. And obviously, a pinched nerve will lead to some nausea and things also. So Fitzsimmons, a key player, he'll play hurt, but it certainly apparently has limited his, limited his performance so far. Second down nine, Rebels. From the 33. Good low. Nice cut. Close to the first down, I believe short of it. And that fullback is so important in this running scheme. And watch Joe Mickles, number 41, leading the way, looking for that line, but gets a block on Kelly Ziegler, cuts it inside. Good stick by Terry Brown, brings Willie Goodlow to the turf. Goodlow with 39 yards. He came in for the injured Sean Sykes, who was hurt in the Tulane game, and has played very well for Ole Miss. Third down one now, Rebels. From the 41, Ambrose in motion on the option. Mark Young dives forward. Good thing he's 6'3", because <laughs> it was just the length of his body that got it. Dale Jones tripped him up. He was the man pressuring him 54. But Mark Young, who's come in here, and as you said on our opening, Tim Foley, he's the quarterback. There were two of them. Mark Young, Chris Osgood, and Ole Miss was searching for a leader, and he's shown some of that in the last few games. Yes, he has. And, of course, Chris Os Osgood, probably the better athlete of the two, and I think that they'll find a place for him to play. He needs to be on the field. But Mark Young displaying good leadership ability and, and uh, good decision-making ability also. He doesn't get him in trouble. Just like that play right there, kept the ball, got the first down. At the 43-yard line, and Young's going to throw. Finds Myers, holds on to it this time, dives out to about the 48, Victor Peppers covering. Ricky Myers with his first reception of the day. He's a little guy, too, 5'8", but he's now has 28 catches on the year. Okay, now there are some people watching that are, are going to understand this. They're in a two-deep zone. Tennessee's played a lot of two-deep zones, so you try to attack that in the middle of the field. That time they swung Sean Sykes out of the backfield, tried to get it deep. Tennessee did a fine job, cut it off. Young had to throw it out, out to the outside. I can help with the explanation. It's T-W-O, not T-O. Yeah. On the option, Mark Young runs for the first down to the 43. Right. The reason I said that, I bumped into a fellow at the airport recently. He says, does that mean they're just back too far? I said, no, that's TWO. We'll be back in just a moment. That's the end of the first quarter. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. The second quarter with the Rebels of Ole Miss leading Tennessee 7-3. The Rebels had a short drive when Tennessee threw an interception and the Rebels took it in for the opening touchdown. Sykes and Mickles. Sykes 46 and Mickles 41 in the backfield. Not much this time. It's 41 Joe Mickles. You know, they say nothing is more relentless than time. And once again, another year drifts by in the voice of the FCC and the host <laughs> oh, my. of our weekend party every afternoon, uh, Saturday afternoon. Bob Neal and once again sees another year drift past, and he is 29 again and holding. <laughs> Thank you to the family with the sign. Second down six. Here's Mark Young. He has Myers open. Ball didn't get there in time. It's incomplete at the 15. Good coverage by 86 Terry McDaniel. <laughs> I don't know. What about the wrinkles? You think? Nah. I, nah I'm Hold it back. Here. Hold it back. It's Hold it back. You know Hold what? I look younger since I've been associated with you. I you like make that. me take care of myself. <laughs> there you go. Definitely more fine tuned. <laughs> That's better. A highly conditioned athlete now. That's it. Let's get off that subject and back to the ball game. That's enough of that subject. 14-21 to go in the first half, and the Rebels lead 7-3. It'll be third down six, Ole Miss at the 40 of Tennessee. Ambrose in motion. 
Incomplete intended for the freshman Bobby Martin, number nine. He was covered by eight Victor Peppers. Let's go to our studios in Atlanta now and Kevin Sleek. All right, Bob, up in Bloomington, Indiana, the Hoosiers at it again. Dave Cramey, 47 yards to Ernie Jones. Defensive back falls down. Touchdown, Hoosiers. They're up 10-0 over the Illini. Back to Jackson. Indiana may be getting some bowl attention today as they lead Illinois. We'll be keeping you updated on the scores all afternoon. Number five you saw was T.D. Thomas Woods as Bill Smith ready to punt on fourth down. Woods standing at his own 11. They may well let the clock tick down here and take a five-yard delay of game penalty to move that ball back, give Smith a little bit better opportunity to down it somewhere inside the 20. Well, it's been a game not unlike what we, Tennessee, could decline it. Let's see what happens there's Robert I.A. It's been a game not unlike what we expected, Tim, defensively. Dead ball, delay, decline. Both teams playing very well on defense, and I think just displaying the fact that they're well coached and well prepared by uh, Tor Bush and Ken Donahue for Tennessee, and uh, and this is the type of defense I think everybody expected from Tennessee all year long, but injuries have prevented that kind of uh, performance. Let's see if Smith can get this one down inside the 10. Looks like a good job. In fact, it is out of bounds at the eight-yard line. An excellent job by an All-American punter, Bill Smith. Only a 31-yard punt, which will reduce the average, but he certainly got the job done. He may be the first punter drafted. Matter of fact, I'll predict he'll be the first punter drafted by the NFL this year. 6-4 looks more like a tight end sometime. Next week, we'll be back at Memorial Stadium in Jackson for what could be a beauty. Ole Miss and Mississippi State both have an opportunity to go to bowls. If they both go, Tim, it would be the first time since 1963 that both of the schools would be going to a bowl game. Tennessee, first and 10 at their own eight, thanks to that Bill Smith punt. Wilson, first down for the 24-yard line. Big holes over there. Charles Wilson really tacking up some yardage. Eight carries, 59 yards thus far. And this is one that's called on the line of scrimmage. Good job by blocking on Brinkley there, and Wilson breaks it to the outside. Now here comes Jeff Noblin. Price drives him back inside, and Noblin holds on. And that, if he hadn't have hung on there, Wilson had the room to go a long way. First down, Tennessee. Francis going to go upstairs. It is complete for the first down to the 36 to Pete Finuska, the senior from Brick, New Jersey, with the reception. Robert Smith with the tackle. And you're exactly right, Bob. This was going upstairs. Miller and Clink Scales streaking down the sideline, but a nice job of coverage by Price and Stevon Moore, and at the last minute, he changed his mind and lifted it out there to Panuska. I mean, the last second he changed his mind. That was a great changeup by the quarterback. That was, and I think that's what's, what John Majors was talking about when he said the type of guy that doesn't make mistakes, that gets you in the right situations. First down 10 from the 36-yard line. Volunteers trailing 7-3. Off to number 25, Jim Miller. He was tripped up by 98, Lester Brinkley. He was spotted about the 41-yard line, and there's Francis. He is the most efficient passer in the Southeastern Conference, completing 66% of his passes. He's thrown five interceptions, counting the one today, and only three touchdown passes. And now, a true freshman, 6'3", 230-pound fullback, Greg Amsler's in there, number 47. Pass goes over the middle. It is complete to the 44-yard line to 87. Joey Clint scales. Noblin with the tackle. And every student has to have a mentor. And Jeff Francis' mentor is teacher is Walt Harris, who was a defensive back for Pacific. Out there on the West Coast, his defensive coordinator was a guy named Buddy Ryan, who's a head coach for the Eagles now. And we'll get back to Walt Harris in a second. From the 44-yard line, first down. Tennessee, they have the freshman, Amsler, 47, and the redshirt freshman, Vando Davis, 29, in the backfield. Here's Vando Davis. Nothing going this time, only a yard. Daryl Smith, credit for the stop. He came to uh, Illinois. Walt with, Harris? Yeah, with Chris White and uh, Coach Dave Wilson there. 
and uh, coach Tony Eason there then came to Tennessee developed Tony Robinson they were really not in uh, such good shape at that time and uh, worked with Doug Dickey and now he's brought along these two young quarterbacks here Francis and Sanders second down eight Tennessee they're at the 42 of Ole Miss trailing 7 3 11 45 to go second quarter Francis looking at a four man rush it is complete again to the 27 yard line Joey Klinkscales was hit instantly by Don Price his fifth tackle they're really working on Price over on that corner okay now watch the feet of the defensive backs here Steve on Moore down at the bottom up top Don Price he plants takes a little bit too long collecting himself but once he does he plants that face mask right in the chest of Joey Klinkscales and the next time Klinkscales goes to catch the ball he's going to think about the impression that Don Price has just made on him First down, 10 volunteers at the 27 this time of Ole Miss. Francis, trouble, gets rid of it to Clint Scales. Oh Eight of about four or five on the play. Howard Moss with the stop. And I do like the poise shown by Jeff Francis, particularly compared to what we saw earlier in the year. Exactly. He's looking for the quick one on the outside. It's not there. Being chased, comes back and f finds Clink Scales, who's just kind of drifted along the sidelines to an open area. He's not expecting the ball. He's a secondary receiver. Francis pulls it down and knifes it over there to him just in time. Second down, five volunteers. On the mark, slot left formation. Francis with the check off at the line. Taking it upstairs, looking into the end zone. Incomplete. It was caught by Thomas Woods, but he was out of the end zone. Covered by 27, Stevon Moore. Woods, the freshman from Gallatin, Tennessee. Almost. That's like Tennessee's season has been. Terrence Real close. They're expecting a safety blitz here. They did get a blitz, and I'm telling you, Terrence Cleveland couldn't have been any more wide open. But Francis lost it to the corner. And here's the a real dilemma for defensive coaches. Stephon Moore, turn your, get your head around. Get your head around, you have a chance to make the interception. Third down five, Tennessee from the 22. Here comes Ole Miss with a blitz. Tennessee picks it up, it's incomplete. Should have been caught by Clink Scales at the eight, in and out of his arms. He was covered by Don Price. Price broke up six passes last week, the last game against LSU, but Wendell Davis caught 12. Price giving room, giving room down around this area. Now, Don, you got to tighten up a little bit. You got to be there making the stick when the ball arrives. Out in the field, that's good distance, good distance, but Don Price playing well. This will be a 39 yard field goal attempt by Reves. Hit it well. And it's good. Two Reves field goals brings Tennessee to within one of the Rebels. 7 6 with 10 29 to go in the first half of play. So Reves kicked a 27-yard field goal in the first quarter, and now a 39-yard field goal, and it is 7-6 Ole Miss. Ole Miss got their touchdown after a Tennessee interception on the opening possession of this ball game. So Ole Miss has yet to put together a really, what you'd call, a legitimate drive. They'll have an opportunity here. J.R. Ambrose is deep to take the Reves kickoff. Ambrose is five. He averages nearly 30 yards a return. Spins out to about the 29 where he goes down. He was hit by 44, Mike Kelly. And Joe Nathan Shelley, number 39, he was injured in the game we televised against Georgia. Is back working on his leg, hopeful to play in this game. Trying to keep that leg loose. I think they plan on using him in some of those, in a, in a five defensive back set. And I'm sure that he's doing a lot of talking to Don Price about what to expect. The young redshirt freshman just thrown in there. It was a long Tennessee drive. Remember, they started that at their eight-yard line to get the field goal from Reveille. First down, 10. Young. Myers wide open. Myers first down. He took some serious punishment for it out to the 41-yard line. I think Ricky Myers was as responsible as anyone as res uh, for igniting this Mississippi defense when we saw them against Tulane, and they were so flat. He came in, make a cup, made a couple of quick catches, and then what he did with the football after he caught it was very impressive. Look at him now. Straight up field, get up field, make the catch, get up field. A lot of receivers, when they catch it going inside, are looking for a place to go down. Two catches for 17 yards in this game, 29 on the year now for Myers. 
It's first down 10 at the 41. Young, deep drop. Diving incomplete. No, they're going to say he got the ball. Goodlow with the reception at the 46. <laughs> now the official says no. I couldn't quite figure that one out. It was simply an incomplete pass. Young looking for the little weak back short option here. Goodlow finds the opening to the outside. Had it in his grasp, but it came out before it hit the ground. It'll be second down 10 at the 41 and five defensive backs in there for Tennessee. They are Peppers, Brown, Davis, McDaniel, and Andre Kramer. Running backs are 41 Nichols and 24 Goodlow. Nichols with the ball. Big hole. Drives to the 50, about a yard short of the first down. Fred Bennett, 95, with a tackle for Tennessee. This is as big a game as Mississippi has been in in 10 years, this decade. If they win this game, they've got to take on Mississippi State next week, but I think that this actually is a bigger challenge for them to believe that they can take on the Tennessees. Now, we saw them beat Tennessee in Knoxville a couple of years ago in an upset. They're playing exceptionally well. 7-6, Rebels leading on the drive. Good low, Dentley, Nichols in the wishbone backfield. Dentley's number 40 gets the... No, he took... The pitch out was almost intercepted by 86 for Tennessee. I think it was 86, maybe 88, Tracy Hayworth. We'll check it on the... Pick it up again. They tried to pick it out, pitch it out there. They faked it to Dentley going over the middle, and then the pitch out was almost intercepted. May have been McDaniel, too. Watch and see this, Tim. Well, their last third and one situation, they ran the same play, and as you remember, Mark Young took it upfield and kept it. That time, he knew he didn't have a chance, and, you know, he wanted that one back as soon as he let it go. He's walking down around on the field, shaking his head, thinking, what are you thinking about, son? If McDaniel is not blocked... He's looking at goal lines and headlines. Exactly. But if. And it's very close to a first down. And they'll bring the sticks all the way across the field to measure. It's right out there near the 50-yard line. We can't see it as, as you can well see until we get a better camera shot. Our director, John Bishop, doing his usual fine job today. You know, that might have even been a forward pass. You know, I, I don't want to... Very close. Yeah, because that, that ball might have been thrown forward the way he pitched it. Let's see what Ole Miss is going to decide to do here. I don't see number 10 in there. It's fourth down at midfield. And about the length of the ball to go. Young is still in there. Bill Smith is not. Ole Miss is going to gamble for a fourth down here. They're either going to gamble for a fourth down, Bob, or they're going to try to jump Tennessee. There was the attempt at jumping Tennessee. Tennessee didn't bite. Right. So that's over. Now these guys just kind of sit back. <laughs> he tried. It didn't go. And they're going to let the clock tick down. Try. But he couldn't do it. He tried. And they'll punt the ball away. The crowd booing. But if they were able to hear you, Tim, they would know that Mark Young just wanted to get somebody from Tennessee to jump off sides. Didn't work. So they'll punt the ball away. No damage on the part of Ole Miss and a good call. I'm sure that's what Billy Brewer's saying right now. Dead exactly. ball, delay, offense. Oh, oh. D.D. Thomas Woods, number five, back inside his 10-yard line. His brother plays for Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt heavily recruited this young man. Tennessee got him. He's going to be really a fine, fine running back. High snap. Not a good punt by Bill Smith this time. That's a bounce. It looked a little bit like a seven iron shot. Stopped at the 23 and a half yard line. And there, oh, Tennessee will take over. Trailing 7-6 with 7.55 to go. Second quarter. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Hardee's. Try our Rise and Shine biscuits. Made from scratch. Tennessee football, Bill Smith punted that one only 31 yards. He was under some serious pressure, but didn't get his foot into it the way he'd like to. He's been, frankly, even though he is a, a returning All-American, been in somewhat of a slump the last four or five ball games. First down, 10 Tennessee. Jeff Francis upstairs, looking deep for Miller. Couldn't quite get to it. 
At the 28, he was covered by Stevon Moore. Miller couldn't run his route the way he wanted to, Tim. No, and it cost him, it cost him a step there. Beautifully thrown ball by Jeff Francis. Boston College leading Syracuse. They had such high hopes, Syracuse did, at the beginning of the season. Ohio State heading for that showdown with the Wolverines in the Big Ten. North Carolina leading Virginia. Virginia with a big upset over North Carolina State last week. NC State rebounding against Duke, leading by seven at halftime. Now 35, William Howard, 28, Keith Davis in the backfield for Tennessee. On the second down. Big, big hole out to the near the 40-yard line goes Keith Davis. 15-yard, 17-yard gain for Keith Davis. Lopez Jones with the tackle, 88. See 31, Rodney Lowe taking the inside charge there, and Smith should step up a little bit more, get a little bit more upfield in that situation. That time, Noblin misses, and Moss drags him down. Keith Davis. Trying to get back from that injury he suffered early in the season. It's really hurt Tennessee's running game to be playing half their schedule without him. Play faking, Francis throwing on the first down. It's complete to Howard. And he got close to the first down, depending on where they decide he stepped out of bounds, and Jones with the tackle again. William Howard, 225-pound fullback, we saw him rush 34 times when he filled in for Davis in the telecast, as you look at Johnny Majors, in the telecast we had earlier with Mississippi State. But William Howard has been in the academic and somewhat athletic doghouse of Johnny Majors of recent. Well, one thing Johnny Majors or any head coach really abhors is a running back putting the ball on the ground. And uh, William Howard had a couple of costly fumbles and then uh, and missed a block that uh, was just a matter of a lack of concentration and in, in, in a form of discipline. Uh, last week, John Majors didn't play him, and now he's got him back in the football game, hoping that William Howard has learned his lesson because he can be a great back. He has 10 touchdowns for Tennessee this year and is the leading rusher, and uh, he filled in admirably. He's a fullback, but he played tailback and had some tremendous yardage in that game that we brought you earlier in the year against Mississippi State. He is a junior from Lima, Ohio. <laughs> You've been watching while we've been talking. We've been trying to figure out what's happening, too. We understand our producer, Skip Ellison, tells us that his sources on the sidelines say that chain is tangled up in the coach's headsets. That'll really make Johnny Major's day. He's not feeling real great about his season as it is. And that's been the type of year. John, <laughs> talking to Johnny uh, last night, he was saying that uh, you know he's been the head coach 19 years, and there's only been one other year that uh, could compare to this. And then when he, it was his last year at Iowa State. They had had an extremely good team the year before, had a lot of talent coming back, but everybody got hurt. High expectations turned into a mediocre season. And... Uh, John's just hoping he can win these last three. Salvage a winning season out of this year. On the first down 10, here is Miller. Oh, they play him well. He can just barely get back to the line of scrimmage. He went out about a yard short of the line of scrimmage. Morton Moss chasing him over there. Ole Miss is very well schooled defensively. I hope I don't speak too soon, but uh, every time we've seen Ole Miss play, in most cases, the players are where they are supposed to be. And Vince Dooley commented about that, uh, the fact that uh, it looked like the Marine Corps out there. One of the reasons is Ron Case, the secondary coach, used to be in the Marine Corps. Cut to the <laughs> second down 11, Tennessee. Here comes pressure. Big loss to the 32. And they had a man open in the end zone, Terrence Cleveland. He had beaten them deep. That's the gamble of the blitz. You bet. We're going to watch Robert Thunder Smith here. He's down in front, fakes like he's coming out of there, and now here he goes. Nobody picked him up, and that might have been William Howard missing that pickup. And finally, Wesley Walls takes him to the ground. But as you mentioned, Terrence Cleveland had given Howard Moss a move and was 10 yards behind him downfield. The luck of the draw. 17-yard loss, third and 28, Tennessee, from the 32. The gamble of the blitz paid off for Ole Miss. Here they come again, down he goes again. Lopez Jones is the man who nailed him, but they were flying in there so fast that 71 Fitzsimmons' helmet came off, a loss of seven yards, 24 yards on two sacks, and listen to this crowd. Crowd is coming to life, starting to realize the magnitude of this game for Mississippi football fortunes. 
Here you see Smith in the right of your screen and Harad right over the center, down like they're going to come. But no, they don't. They come back out of there. Rodney Lowe came around the outside and flushed the quarterback up into Lopez Jones. Here's Garman's punt taken by Goodlow at the 39. He gets to the 46. And Ole Miss with a one-point lead has good field position. And five minutes, 39 seconds. And Johnny Major's not real happy with the way things are going. Play of that defensive series. You see number 34, Robert Smith. Now, William Howard is looking at Robert Smith right now. Okay, roll it. Now, he thinks he's dropping out. Now he looks someplace else, and here comes Smith. And by the time he picks him up again, he doesn't see him till it's too late, and Smith's got the pressure on the quarterback in the sack. It's called a lookout block. <laughs> right, but it's, it, again, okay. good, good, coaching, good coaching philosophy, though. Well, it looks like the Ole Miss cannon misfired there. A little smoke in the stands. We hope that's okay. We'll keep an eye on that for you. But right now, we watch Sean Sykes get about three yards. <laughs> it's rough here. This is this is the Southern football, folks, and it gets rough. Number 46, Sean Sykes. They'll be clearing out old section 308 or whatever that is, right to the left of our broadcast booth. Maybe they were barbecuing over there. <laughs> Looks like everybody's surviving, however. Second down, six. From the 50-yard line, Ole Miss leading 7-6. Five minutes to go in the quarter. Play fake. Young to throw. He's going to run it. And he does get the first down. Just by inches, but he knew exactly where he was going out at the 43-yard line. Mark Young showing, in my view, Tim, and, and correct me if you disagree, showing a little bit more foot quickness than we saw earlier, maybe because of confidence. I think so. I think he's relaxing. You know, when you spend... Now, this may sound silly, but when you spend, you're spending a lot of time thinking about what you should be doing, you just don't really react. You don't use your athletic ability. It'll be first down 10 at the 43. Here comes Sean Sykes. Driving to the 37-38 yard line. Marion Hobby, number 90, with the stop. Sykes coming off the injury. Another fine job by Joe Mickles picking up Dale Jones on the blitz. As we mentioned, Jones hanging around the middle of that defensive uh, front. Tried to blitz up inside to cut off Sykes before he got going, and Mickles cut him down. Got about five, second down five. Five defensive backs in for the Volunteers. Ambrose in motion. Sykes again. Got to about the 34 before he was stopped. Did not look to me as though he got to the first down stick. That's at about the 33 and a half yard line. There's Sean Sykes. He's a sophomore from West Point, Mississippi. Uh, we had said earlier, I think it was Moss Point. There are Chris Osgood, for instance, is from Moss Point. Sean Sykes and Robert Smith are from West Point, Mississippi. Okay. We apologize. So those letters that you're writing, now you can throw them out. Throw them out. We caught them. <laughs> oh, I almost got my head taken off. I said Yazoo City the other night. Man. Not right. Close, yeah, but no cigar. Yeah. <laughs> Third down two for the Rebels. And they give to number 41, Mickles. The ball popped out. I believe it was after the whistle. And he gets the first down. You know, I can't come into Mississippi without thinking about our the good friend of TBS we have out there, Jerry Clower. I always feel like listening to a couple of Jerry Clower tapes before I come to one of these games here. <laughs> the pride of Yazoo City. He played college football at Mississippi State. By the way, Mississippi State and LSU play tonight in this same stadium. This is called the Football Classic Weekend. Ole Miss and Tennessee in the day, LSU, Mississippi State tonight. First down 10, Rebels on the drive from the 32. They lead 7-6. Good protection. Flag down. It is complete to the freshman Green. He, he gets to the 19, but a penalty marker is down in the Ole Miss backfield. 13-yard gain. Got to be holding in that situation. <laughs> Robert Aye referee and it is going to be holding well there have been very few penalties for many yards in this ball game none against Tennessee four and now if this is accepted and it is five against Ole Miss holding 
Offense. I might point out two of the five against Ole Miss were intentional delay of ball game to get better position for a punt. You know, and Robert McGraw has done a good job putting together this old this line for Ole Miss. He lost last year. Genovese and Clark and Sheehan and Rayburn and, and Ross had to really put together a new group, and they're playing well. First and 20 from the 42-yard line now. Young on that rollout again. This time, Tennessee was there with the tackle, 59, Mark Hovannik, the junior from Yorktown, Virginia. One thing that Tennessee's doing defensively, Bob, is that, that outside rush in, as you see Hovannik there, is really outside and upfield. Uh, Mississippi will drop back. They'll do that little set roll. They'll set up and then try to roll to the outside, and Tennessee wants to contain the, that. They don't want to let them outside. Mark Young is down on the field out at about the 48-yard line. They're looking that young man over right now. We'll check to see his condition. Let's hope he's okay. We'll report on it when we return. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Tim Foley. Uh, Tim, somebody's always after our jobs, and they're starting younger and younger. <laughs> couple of young broadcasters to be. And the new quarterback is Chris Osgood. We think, by the way, Mark Young's okay. He left the field of his own power, but you have to substitute when a player goes down with an injury for at least one play. Let's see. Osgood on the second down 24. Dumps it off here to Sykes. Big play. And he gets back many of the yards that had been lost. But he is far short of the first down. The first down marker is out at the 22-yard line. You're going to see Derek King, number 67, pull out from the line here. The right guard, boom, there he goes. If Sykes could have stayed outside here, look at King's got uh, Terry Brown walled inside. If he could have stayed outside, he might have gone a long way. Good run, though, by Sean Sykes. Well, Chris Osgood stays in there. This will be third down and now about 10. So he got back 14 of the 24. Reestablished field position, at least. On the option, Osgood about the 27 and down he goes 49 Kelly Ziegler with the stop looking down to the sideline to see if I can see Mark Young and I do not see him on the sideline right now there he is and looks to be okay so it'll be fourth down five and it'll be a field goal attempt at the 34 a 44 yard attempt by Brian Owen Brian Owen is only six out of 11 in field goal attempts this year he's hit some long ones had some bad luck a couple blocked This one is not going to get there. Misses badly, wide to the left side. Did not hit it well at all. And the score remains Rebel 7, Volunteers 6, with only 41 seconds remaining in the half. This telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Southeastern Conference. It is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, rebroadcast, or retransmissions of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game in whole or in part without the express written consent of the Southeastern Conference and Turner Broadcasting is prohibited. Coming up at halftime, the Pride of the South Band of Ole Miss. College football scores some very important games going on today in terms of the bowl situation. They give the bids the 22nd, but really most of the handshake deals are done after this Saturday's competition. There's Mark Young. Not sure what happened to him. Uh, he was knocked down, may have had the wind knocked out of him. He came out, and we'll just check on his condition and see if he'll return. But Chris Osgood went in to replace him, and now it's Tennessee's ball. So he has a full series, depending on how well the Rebel defense plays here, to recuperate. Only 41 seconds for Tennessee. Tennessee does have three timeouts left if they want to try to get down and get something happening here. You see they've only been able to put up two field goals. They've not had really great field position. One at the 38, but the other, the last drive was 70 yards for the field goal. How about that? We just got catered. <laughs> he's just got catered from Doc's Ribs. Happy birthday. That's because of the birthday, and it's right there. Pass me a rib, please. No, we'll, we'll hold that till halftime. Johnny Majors trying to figure what to do here, Tim. Do you think they'll go into a 41-second kind of offense? I think they'll try to get something out of it. Yeah, at this point in the game, this point in their season, they're going to take every chance they can. <laughs> well, there you go. There well, you go. You guess some sometimes, and sometimes you get it, and sometimes you don't. Keith... Davis with the run, and I think Johnny Majors is, is, you know what? 
on another season. Had this been last year, Tennessee would be going for it here. But this, the way things have gone, it makes you wonder if maybe they back off a little sometimes. Sometimes you do tend to get a little gun shy. When you're playing with confidence, it's just like you see basketball players. They start throwing it, hooking it from the corner because everything they're throwing up falls. And that's the kind of year it was last year for Tennessee. This year, it's been that in reverse for them. Nothing seems to have gone right. But they trail only 7-6, and the Volunteers have really had more successful and better drives for the most part than Ole Miss in this first half of play. So Tennessee will go in and regroup. We've got an excellent ball game on our hands. Stay with us for halftime from Jackson, Mississippi. Tim, I'll share that with you as usual. <laughs> I Good. appreciate that, fellas. Thank Good. you very much. Ready for the second half. Ole Miss leading 7-6, and they get the opportunity to go on offense as Ambrose takes it at the 14 drives out to the 29-yard line. Halftime statistics, as Tim told you, pretty much dead even. Look at the time of possession at the bottom. That's the most even. The Rebels' penalty is a little misleading, too. Some of those have been intentional. Mark Young needs to get some more yardage in the air. As you can see, Mark Young and Chris Osgood, who shared the quarterbacking duties. Mark Young is back in. He went out shaken up, and Osgood had the last drive, but Mark Young back in there now. And off. Good low. Big first down to the 45-yard line. Dale Jones with a tackle. 15-yard gain for Willie Goodlow. Can't beat this kind of blocking. Adam Sek pulls out. Todd Irvin gets a good hook block there. Nice cut block. Adam Sek turns up field, and Willie Goodlow's just follow him right behind him there like our good friend Paul Horn is to do. Green Bay Packers hide me. Willie's hard to see. Saw Paul running the sweep through the Atlanta airport. We came over yesterday. First down, 10. Running up the middle this time with Joe Mickles. Just short of the 50-yard line. Gain of about four. Paul will be with Mel Proctor for tonight's telecast on many of these stations. It'll be Southern Cal and Joe Cap, who's the outgoing coach at the University of California. Second down, five. A long five for Ole Miss. The Tennessee defense digs in a little. Here's Young in some trouble. Throwing on the run, missing everybody. Wanted to get Mario Perry, his tight end. Good quarterback pressure, though, from 54 Dale Jones. He came shooting right in there on Mark Young. Here's an interesting stat, Tim, as you look at 14. When Mark Young passes for 150 yards or more in a game. Ole Miss is 6-0. and Look at his stats now. 24 yards. That's uh, a little bit, a little short, I'd say. And the that one, indicates balance is what sure. I'm getting at. And if, if they've got their running game going, and their defense is playing well, solidly. Third and five, Ole Miss right at the 50-yard line. Young's going to throw here. That's the time. It is complete to the freshman, Willie Green. the 28 and a half yard line Terry Brown covering and that'll add to the Mark Young statistics the pattern they've chosen to attack Tennessee's too deep zone is run the halfback up through the middle of the field clear that linebacker out Ziegler went with him part way and he went as far as he could go then they hit Willie Green underneath the coverage a true For freshman he got 22 yards on him. nice game from Athens Georgia found him Underneath the doorstep of Vince Dooley. First down 10. Here comes Goodlow on the sweep again. And then he drives to about the 23-yard line, hit by 49 Ziegler and 45 Darren Miller for the University of Tennessee. Rebels lead by one. I think we need to mention again Robert McGraw's offensive line. Good time to throw the football. One thing Johnny Majors has to be concerned about is pressure on the quarterback. We need to get some pressure on the quarterback, folks. Ole Miss started this drive at their 30-yard line. Now to the 23 of Tennessee. No pressure on the quarterback this time. It is complete to Green again. And Green is short of the first down, just barely. Darren Miller with the stop for Tennessee. Let's see where they give him his forward progress. This may require the bringing in of the sticks from the sideline. 
A nice read by Mark Young. They ran Goodlow up the field into the corner, brought the split end underneath the coverage. In a man-to-man -man situation, Young would have chosen Goodlow, thrown it over the top because he'd had a linebacker on him. In that particular situation, zone, he read it correctly, threw it to the wide receiver coming over the middle. It's just short of a first down, as you can see by just mere inches where it will be third down for the Ole Miss Rebels. They are inside the 20 at about the 19-yard line of Tennessee, leading by a score of 7-6. to six. Ole Miss came into this game with a 6-2-1 and one record. They are still contending for the Southeastern Conference Championship. Trickery has not been the essence of the Ole Miss offense. Conservative play calling, but this would be a good opportunity to pull off a play pass. They instead give it to 255-pound Tony Dentley, redshirt freshman from Memphis, who's their short yardage specialist. And he gets the first down. Gets only two, takes it to the 17, first down, 10 Ole Miss. Leading 7-6. A very significant defensive stand for Tennessee now. 41 Mickles, 24 Goodlow in the backfield. Myers splits wide to the left side. Ambrose wide to the right side. Here comes Goodlow. Inside the 15 to the 14-yard line, tripped up by Dale Jones. His fifth tackle of the afternoon. We have 11.57 to go, third quarter. They're in a position there, Bob. They've moved the tight end back off the line of scrimmage. As Johnny Majors makes some notes, I'm sure he's reflecting on what he's seen and things that he can talk to the defensive coaches about when he has time. He doesn't want to interrupt their thought process right now. They're, they're in the middle. It's trying to stop this Mississippi offense. Slot left formation. Second down six Ole Miss from the 13. It's a draw. Tennessee is there to stop 41 Joe Mickles. Not much gain at all. So it will be third down in short yardage. It was Hovannik making the play that time. He has been hampered by a shoulder injury all year long. Mark Hovannik, a big play man last year for Tennessee. Really came out of the woodwork to become a stellar player in that defensive front that you mentioned has been really, really hampered by injuries this year. All right, they send Ambrose to the left side. Myers to the right side. It is third down five. From the 12. They run it right up the middle off left guard with Joe Mickles again inside the 10, close to the first down. I do not believe he made it. It may be a field goal opportunity here for Brian Owen. A decision to be made by Billy Brewer. It'll be fourth down and about one from the nine. Brian Owen badly missed his previous field goal attempt. But since it's a long one, matter of fact, they're calling it two yards, we're going to get a 26-yard field goal attempt right in the center of the field from Brian Owen. Missed a 44-yarder earlier. This one should be no problem. It is no problem. It is successful. It is Ole Miss 10, Tennessee 6, 10-13 to go. Third quarter from Jackson. Has scored a touchdown on their first possession of the game and then on their first possession of the second half get a field goal from Brian Owen of 26 yards and lead 10 to 6 over the volunteers who've managed only to kick two field goals in this ball game so far 10-13 to go third quarter Anthony Miller deep for Tennessee Bill Smith will kick off for Ole Miss strong leg. It was right out of the back of the end zone. Bill Smith will be somebody's draft choice probably in pro football as a punter. 6-4, works out with weights, one of the better lifters on the team and can really hit that ball. And it puts Tennessee into the end zone. They bring it out to the 20-yard line where Jeff Francis brings out the volunteers. Jeff Francis, 8 of 15 for 72 yards and one interception in the first half. A young man whose development has really been important to this Tennessee offensive as they begin to come to life. From Mount Prospect, Illinois, Jeff Francis. First down 10 from the 20. Panuska and Howard in the backfield. It's Panuska. It's about 10 on the play. Over on the right side, Howard Moss with the stop. 
They may spot the ball just short of the first down, give it a gain of nine. There's Ron Zook. He was a defensive coordinator at Kansas before he came here to work with Ken Donahue. Drawing up a pattern there. He works with the defensive backs. <laughs> Zook, talking to him before the game. He's a pack of roll aids a day. He just, you know, he's just one of the, some people are real calm. Look at him. He talks 100 million words a minute, as my son would say. 100 million. Huh? Yeah, everything's 100 million. Second down, about one. Handoff, Tennessee. First down. It's William Howard with the carry. Rodney Lowe with the tackle. So Tennessee, they can get their druthers. They'll get a touchdown. They've had only two field goals in this ball game. Crowd of about 35,000 here today. I think we told you in the first half that this is doubleheader football day in Jackson at Memorial Stadium. Tonight, Mississippi State entertains LSU. First down, 10 volunteers from the 35. Hand off to the tailback. It's Keith Davis to the 37. He's hit by 31. Rodney Lowe again. Lowe with his fifth tackle. Rowan Harad in there stuffing it. Harad had one of his best games he's ever played at Mississippi against LSU. As did several of the Mississippi defenders, I think. They had to play well down there in Baton Rouge for, for uh, Mississippi to stay with LSU. Second down, seven. In an eye formation, Vando Davis and Jim Miller. Vando Davis is 29. Jeff Francis, who works his mind over during these games. A lot of free snap reads. Here comes Vando Davis, trying to cut against the grain, but Ole Miss is there, 52. Bubba Dick Dickey from Biloxi, Mississippi with a stop. Bubba Dickey and Robert Smith are filling in that vacancy left by Huddleston, Fuzzy Huddleston, when he was injured earlier. Bubba Dickey, a sophomore. We saw him get his first action last year, Bob, against LSU. Had 10 tackles, and it's been that type of, he's been that type of player for Mississippi. Good pursuit, good upfield, stayed behind the ball, so when the cutback game came, he was there to make the stop. Tennessee only three out of seven on third down conversions. This is third and five from the 39. The blitz, Tennessee picks it up. Francis can't get the completion. He wanted to go to Clint Scales. We're going to watch this again. Watch Don Price working against Joey Klingscales up at the top of your screen. Mississippi now coming up, coming up, and they're going to come after Tennessee. Tennessee goes with full protection, leaving both backs in. And you see Don Price working man-to-man -man against Klingscales. Beautiful job of coverage in perfect position to make a play on the ball if it was well thrown. Here's Garman's punt. It's a good one. Good low, it is 16. Excellent coverage by Tennessee. Goodlow gets nowhere on that one. It was a 45-yard punt and excellent coverage. First man down, number 91, Mike Whitehead. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Tennessee Vols had won five straight games, had their sights set on an SEC title when they hosted Ole Miss in front of our TBS cameras. But Coach Billy Brewer's team surprised the big Neyland Stadium crowd with a shocking 13-10 upset. The Rebels' first bowl invitation in 12 years followed, and Billy Brewer, who had returned to his alma mater that year, was eventually named SEC Coach of the Year. And that victory in Knoxville made it all possible. Ole Miss ball, first down 10 from their own 16. Sean Sykes to the 22-yard line, and down he goes. Fred Bennett with the stop, number 95 for Tennessee. I think that was the game that uh, Kelly Powell was playing quarterback, wasn't he? 1983, they kept running that little play pass. A little roll to the weak side, hit the tight end crossing, and uh, Tennessee never did get that stopped. And that's about all they did to hurt Tennessee, but it was enough to win the game. Remember the fumble going in to score the touchdown? Randall Morris for Tennessee fumbled on the goal line. Too hard to handle Randall. He's playing in Seattle now, I believe. Second down, six. Full miss. Not much this time. Two or three yards to about the 24 goes Sean Sykes. There's been five defensive backs this series for Tennessee. They, they seem to alternate. They start a series with five defensive backs, and then they go back to their regular set. The only turnover in this ballgame, that interception, that resulted in the old Miss touchdown, which is the difference in the ballgame. That was on Tennessee's first possession in the first quarter. It is third and three from the 24. 
Mark Young going for some distance, looking for Willie Green, incomplete at the 45 of Tennessee, covered by number eight, Victor Peppers. And Bill Smith will come into punt again. On this day, Bill Smith is averaging only 37 yards. He leads the conference with 44, usually. Isolation and protection there. Good job again by the Mississippi offensive line and excellent coverage by, by Victor Peppers. No daylight in there. On a day of good defensive play both ways. Bill Smith with a cannon shot. Way this back. one is over 50. It's out of here at the 16-yard line. T.D. Woods hauled down by the neck of his jersey at the 28-yard line. That was a 60-yard punt. We'll be right back. Today's game is being brought to you by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Well, that 60-yard punt by Bill Smith was the longest punt for him this year. He had at a 59-yarder earlier. That's the 79th punt of his college career that's been longer than 50 yards. But from the 28, Tennessee, Francis with the play fake. Throws on the run. It is complete to Miller. Excuse me, William Howard. And Howard near the first down, out to the 39-yard line, and they are going to spot it for a first down. It will be first down 10, Tennessee, to William Howard. I think before the game's over, Tennessee has got to try to get up over the top. Mississippi is doing an excellent job of underneath coverage. They're reacting to those short routes, and they're covering the intermediate routes, but a couple of times during the game, Tennessee receivers have been clear behind them. First and 10 from the 39-yard line. It's a flea flicker. And now he's going over the top. Must have heard Coach Foley looking for Miller. Incomplete at the 15-yard line, and Don Price was there. The freshman was right there. Could that have been pass interference? I think that could have, might have been pass interference on the offense. Let's of see course. This. <laughs> you know, Mississippi is converging on the ball so fast. I think this is it. This is the way they're going to try to get up over the top. Don Price in perfect. Look at that. Now, if that guy's been a defensive player, they'd have thrown the flag. All you have to do is blow hard <laughs> on him if you're on defense to call offense. Hey, uh, you know, a little, uh, a little push out of the way, but not really significant. Not really significant. Good job of coverage by Don Price. In the NFL, they would have called it incidental contact. Right. Not so in college. No flag. Second down, 10. Another pass. Clint Scales breaks a tackle. Gets the first down. Excellent second effort by Joey Clink Scales, and Harrod will bring him down. I gave him the first down on it. It's going to be very close to it by about the length of the ball if they do get it. And Clink Scales slow to get up. Clink Scales, a senior from Knoxville, came into this game with 26 receptions, and very unusual for him, he had has no touchdown receptions this year. Steve Moore reacting on it. Clink Scales gives him a little dip. It looks like Harad there with Ben Morris and uh, might have turned his ankle or rolled his knee a little bit. They have got some receivers at Tennessee. Anthony Miller has really come on. They're, they're excited about a freshman that they have their red shirting, Bob. Eh? Alvin Harper, 6'4 and a half from Frostproof, Florida. They say, uh, and you know, when you talk to Johnny Majors about receivers, go back to uh, Crefley at Iowa State, the many great ones he had at Pittsburgh, and of course last year McGee and so many others, Galt at Tennessee. When he says this player is as good as any of them, he's yeah. talking about Harper as a freshman. That's exactly, because uh, at Iowa State he had uh, Otto Stowe and Ike Harris, and Ike then Harris. all that, that long list <laughs> of uh, one, one leaves and the next one shows up at Tennessee is even better. So this year, the surprise this year, I think, to most people, not so surprising I, I, as they still look at uh, Joey Klinkscales, the surprise, they're going to help him off the field. Looks like his left leg, the injury. And let's hope the young man is okay. But it doesn't look good at this point, certainly not for continuation in this ballgame. Klinkscales is backed up by Miller and or Terrence Cleveland or Thomas Woods. And what you lose in clink scale is the experience that a knowledgeable receiver has. The ability to get open in those tight situations, catch the ball over the middle. Yeah, he's you a probably, great one-two punch with Miller. Right. You, but you probably pick up more speed 
with Woods and Cleveland. Thomas Woods, Terrence Cleveland are in the ball game as the receivers now for the Tennessee Volunteers on first down 10. The ball right at the 50. It was a first down reception by Clean Skates. So the Volunteers trail 10-6, but they are on the drive. They started from their 28. Davis drives to the 46-yard line, and down he goes. 4.52 to go, third quarter. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you, along with our fine booth crew, Kim Anderson, Alex Vergara, and Paula Edge. One thing you see Mississippi being is very patient. They wait for Jeff Francis to make the changes, make the call, then they move. Really think in a situation like this, you have to go with some quick counts so the defense doesn't play with you like that. Second down, six. Tennessee with a slot right formation. Cleveland and Woods are still the wide receivers. Both freshmen. And no Davis again. 44 and not much more. Wesley Walls with the stop. An old miss proving to continue to be very tough against the run. Stevon Moore very quick to support that run, turn it back to the inside, back into Jeff Farad. Ron Case has to be a proud of his defensive backs this afternoon. They've played very, very well, very effective. Tennessee has rushed for 102 yards today. Ole Miss usually allows about 140. On third down five, it is complete. Where will they spot us? They spot it as a first down reception. Anthony Miller with a catch, Price covering, penalty marker down. The official said that the forward progress got the ball across the 40, inside the 40, which would give him the first down. Personal foul against Ole Miss. They'll tag that on to the first down yardage. Price taking him back. Miller trying to shake him off. And old Fitzy gets too excited. Comes in and put the hat on him. That ball. Personal foul. Defense, first down. Whenever you have a player that plays with the emotion of Mike Fitzsimmons, that's going to happen every once in a while. I mean, he didn't really put the severe hammer on him, but it was worthy of a yellow flag. It won't be the last one. And he, he grew up in a neighborhood that, uh, hey, man, Sonny Liston could have been the Avon lady in that neighborhood. <laughs> that's a tough, tough place. Whoa. First down 10. Clink scales back in, we're happy to say. And off Keith Davis, driving to the 21-yard line. Tennessee trailing 10-6, 3.09 to go in this quarter, but the Volunteers have a drive going. This started at the Tennessee 28-yard line. That's tougher than my neighbor. You see Dave Cutcliffe there, screaming instructions to the offensive line. So Doug Matthews with a headset on there along the sideline, signaling in the play to Jeff Francis. Second down six from the 21. Keith Davis broke one tackle from Fitzsimmons, got inside the 20, and drives to within a couple of yards of the first down marker. Fitzsimmons tripped him up. Walls finished him off. Remember, he's playing with a pinched nerve in his neck. Makes the move, gets rid of the blocker, makes the hit, but it just can't grab, just can't hold on, and is unable to make the play. It'll be third down two. Significant play both ways here. Ole Miss battling for a conference championship. Tennessee battling for pride. And hopes for a winning season if they can win the rest of their three games. Third and two. Penalty marker goes down as the 25-second clock expired. I believe that's the call. Yes, delay of game. It'll be third and seven, and that changes everything. And Johnny Majors is really frustrated with this entire season, and of course, that play doesn't help him any. I think that that's the point, and that's the word they use, frustrated. How, how can you get caught for a delay of game on a third and one situation when you're moving in for a score that's going to take you ahead? That's just not something that you do when you're, when you're smart. You lose. Jeff Francis lost, lost control of the time. Just can happen. First penalty of the game against Tennessee. Third and seven now from the 22. Francis the left side to Miller. First down. Big reception. Miller gets it to the six. 16 yards on the reception. That's coming back. 
Yeah, this is really the first tackle that the Mississippi defensive backs have missed. They've been right on everyone. You see Stevon Miller, Moore, excuse me, right there. Almost, Miller almost took off, and that threw him off a little bit. And now Jeff Francis looks up at the sideline and says, do you, you forgive me, John? Anthony Miller, transfer from Pasadena City College. First and goal from the six volunteers, trailing 10-6. 141 to go, third quarter. Miller to the three, and down he goes. He was tripped up by 31, Rodney Lowe. Uh, he's got, he's got a little his, calmer now. Yeah, right, got his composure back. Let's wind this thing up. Let's get the play in there. Often, oftentimes, when the play's coming in from the sideline, there's a discussion between Doug Matthews and Walt Harris up in the booth. If the play doesn't come in in time, it throws the quarterback's timing off. He feels like he's got actually more time than he does at the line of scrimmage. Three backs, 28 Davis, 25 Miller, 35 Howard for Tennessee. Timeout, Jeff Francis. Didn't like what he saw. Remember now, Ole Miss has not given up a touchdown rushing in nearly 20 quarters. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. All right, here we go. You see the score. 105 to go, third quarter. It is second down goal from the four. If you're on defense, all you want it to do is be over. John Majors has a lot of choices. They like to fade on the outside. Personally, I like the isolation to the slot. If you can get it, the clink scales back to the short side. Davis gets to about the two, where it'll be third down and goal. A.D. Matthews with the tackle. Keith Davis carrying that time. Here they come with the draw, 34, Robert Smith, 66, Jeff Harrod. Smith fills it, rids himself of the blocker, and makes a play. Nice job. Third down goal from the two. Time running down third quarter. 35 seconds left and clock ticking. Keith Davis, 28, 35, William Howard in the backfield. And another timeout. This time it's Ole Miss with the timeout. Johnny Majors gets a free one from his offensive viewpoint. Ole Miss huddling around their head coach down there, and I bet you know what he's telling them, among other things. Well, what he's trying to get across to him, I think, is the importance of this particular uh, situation. Mississippi hasn't been in this situation since uh, the late 60s. They've got a chance. They can win this football game. Of course, next week will be a dogfight. It always is against Mississippi State. But they're in, a, in good shape to control their own destiny and earn a share of an SEC championship. Billy Brewer was a part of that, and I'm sure all week he's talked to them about tradition and the meaning of that championship ring that they have an opportunity to wear. But you gotta line up and play your instincts. Play your instincts. Turn yourself loose. You can't think too much. You can't worry about making mistakes. You just gotta do your job and do it well. There's still a lot of football left to go, too. 15 minutes left to go in football. Look at the look at the faces of the crowd here at Ole Miss. The, the students and the fans, usually this is kind of a nice afternoon. Ole Miss has a pretty good ball club, but it's fingernail biting time in Jackson now if you're a Rebels backer. Third and goal, Tennessee from the two. Rebels lead 10-6. They are set. Francis. Tennessee will do. Yes, they are going to kick. It will give Tennessee a chance to pull to within one. Toughest place to cover a guy is from that tight end position. You got the quick quickness of a Terrence Cleveland. Noblin let him inside. He shouldn't do that, but recovered well. The ball was thrown a little bit too low and a little bit behind. Reves with his opportunity for his third field goal of the day. 31 seconds to go, third quarter. It will be a 19-yarder. Severe angle. It is good. Tennessee does pull to within one. It was a 13-play drive, but the Ole Miss defense still has not yielded a rushing touchdown, and they have really played tough today. Well, you talk about heartbeats now. I tell you, respiration rates are up at this particular point in time. 
both coaches watching here. Immediately after the ball, after the ball was snapped, immediately after the ball was snapped, the Tennessee coaches had to be excited because Terrence Cleveland got inside. He got inside a novel and shouldn't have been able to do that. Once you're in there, it's clear. The ball wasn't delivered really quite on time and thrown a little bit behind, gave Noblin, who has just been an excellent performer all year for Mississippi, a chance to get back into it. Five and a half minutes, and Tennessee comes away with only three. They've only scored field goals today. Three off the foot of Reves. But Tennessee's right in this game, trailing by one, 10-9. What a ball game we have. We expected this kind of ball game today. It's a big one for the Rebels. If you ask Johnny Majors, we spoke with him last night. It's a big one for the Volunteers. They're playing like it. It's still frustrating. They can't get in the end zone. Ambrose at the three. To the 26-yard line. With the trip up is eight peppers. 24-yard return. And now the Ole Miss Rebels come out there. Mark Young. Has thrown 12 passes, and they've run the ball 31 times. Young has thrown for 50 yards. Osgood threw one for 14. As I told you before, Ole Miss has a good record when he throws for more than 150. And when he doesn't, they usually lose. He needs to balance a little bit here. He is throwing, or attempting to throw. Down he goes at the 18. It is 90. Marion Hobby, a freshman from Irondale. Alabama. See, Bob, what Tennessee is doing, though, they're starting out with five defensive backs, so they're almost forcing Mississippi to run the football. That time, they tried to get it down the middle on them, uh, weren't able to fit it in there, and Young goes down. That's the end of the third quarter. This ball game is still up in the air. Tim Foley and I were just chatting about it. Tennessee has three field goals from Reves. The Rebels have one field goal, one touchdown. Total offense, Tennessee 239, Ole Miss. 200 and the run goes out across the 30 to the 32 yard line Joe Mickle with a gain of about seven and there's the counter punch Joe Mickles portions of today's game are being brought to you by Budweiser Beechwood age for that distinctively clean crisp taste that makes Budweiser the king of beers for all you do this buds for you it is third down four Ole Miss opening of the fourth quarter Rebels 10, balls 9. At the 21-yard line, he goes down. The tackle made by Kelly Ziegler, number 49. As Mark Young rolled to his left side, Tennessee saw it coming. You just see a host of white jerseys going right with the flow. Never really had a chance here. You see Ziegler coming on secondary contain, and when you're running to, against your body there, a right-hander running to his left, it's really tough to set up and get it off. Big defensive play for Tennessee. Smith to punt. Not a good one. Matter of fact, he hit it very poorly. T.D. Woods at his own 44. It's going to be excellent field position for Tennessee at the 49-yard line. So after a 60, only a 34-yard punt. Let's go to our studios and Kevin Sleep. All right, Bob, thank you very much. Up in Bloomington, the Illini on the comeback trail. Menkhausen to Jerry Reese, 16 yards and a touchdown. Illinois has overtaken Indiana, 14-13 in the third quarter. Let's go back to Jackson, Mississippi. Here we have 13 minutes, 38 seconds remaining in the ball game with Ole Miss holding a slim 10-9 lead. But Tennessee with excellent field position at their own 49-yard line. Jeff Francis calls timeout again. That'll take Tennessee down to only one timeout left in this ball game. At 10 men on the field. We'll take a break here and be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Come from behind here. Look at those statistics. Tennessee has outscored their opposition in every quarter this year, except for the fourth, where they had their score practically doubled. Exactly well, doubled. The, yeah, that's not the type of stat you like seeing. You like to get stronger as the game goes on. Ole Miss has barely outscored their opposition in the fourth quarter, 31 to 26. But Tennessee has had real problems. Of course, they were leading Army. And Army came from behind to beat them. They were, Tennessee was leading Mississippi State. And Mississippi State came from behind. That great play by Don Smith to come from behind and beat them. And it's happened on other occasions, too. 
the reason we're waiting, you see the 25-second clock there. It is down to zero, and they can't reset it. And that will be a problem until they can come together with it. Here's some scores from action today. Second-ranked Michigan leading Minnesota in the third quarter. That's a battle. Vanderbilt losing to Virginia Tech. That's third quarter. Oklahoma leading Colorado. Colorado playing for the Big 8 title there. Kentucky leading Florida. But Lexington. South Carolina over Wake Forest easily at halftime. All right, we're back now. UT's best start of the day in field position. First and ten. Francis. He's got a deep. Hits Howard short, however. And Howard goes out of bounds right at the 40-yard line for a first down. Robert Smith chasing him out. And my, he did have it available deep. Clink scales just wide open. They're, they're, they, You see Don Price? He got tied up looking back at the quarterback. And I'm, I don't know if he thinks he's got deep help or what, but there was no one back there. Noblin, if he was the deep help, as you can see, he was 10 to 15 yards away. Noblin wasn't playing it like he was the deep help, Bob. He was playing it like the deep middle. And it looked like a three-deep zone, and uh, Don Price just lost his concentration momentarily. First down, 10, Tennessee at the 40. Francis floods the zone. Incomplete. Tried to get it to Pete Panuska at about the 34-yard line. It'll bring up second down, 10. Rebels, 10. Vols, 9. 13.26 to go in this ballgame. Rebels playing for a share of the Southeastern Conference Championship. As we said at the opening of this telecast, what a difference a year make. makes. Last year, we were at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee, on their way to a conference championship. And the tables are turned this year. A.D. Matthews in the game, so they've got the five defensive back package. They like coming out of this one. Second down, 10. Keith Davis, William Howard in there for the Volunteers of the backfield. Francis on the option. Pitches to Davis. Not much. The excellent play made by 23, A.D. Matthews. Good call. Really creative call by uh, Walt Harris because the option is one of the things that you're always concerned about in man-to-man -man coverage because there's no one assigned to the quarterback in man-to-man -man coverage. Mississippi, however, made the play, so it didn't make any difference. It's a good call or not. Third down, eight. Now the crowd here. Partisan Ole Miss crowd in Jackson on their feet, calling for another big defensive play from the Rebels. They've been doing it all day. Francis going long. Looking for clink scales. Touchdown. What a job of catching the ball. Stevon Moore was all over him. Clink Scales with his first touchdown catch of the year, and the Volunteers take the lead on the 38-yard scoring toss. We see it again here. Stevon Moore has had a great year for Mississippi, been a stellar player all year long, in good position on Joey Clink Scales. The guy that probably shouldn't get deep on you is Joey Clink Scales, but doesn't make a play on the ball. And I think that the defensive backs are so afraid now of interference and bumping and contact with the offensive man. He just never did make an aggressive play to the football. Tennessee leading 15 to 10 has elected to go for two. Last time they're in this position, they tried to stick it inside to uh, Terrence Cleveland. This time he's going outside to him. Excellent defensive play by 31, Rodney Lowe. Howard Marsh was back there, too, Howard Moss. And it remains 15 to 10. Tennessee has taken the first lead of the day for the Volunteers. 38-yard touchdown pass. Clink Scales on the left of your screen. Clink Scales looking in at the football. Harrod and Smith up there in the middle of the line. Here they come. Boom. Man-to-man -man coverage. Moore turning. In good position. Stride for stride. Clink Scales just out positions him for the football. Good shape all the way until right at the end. Ambrose at the one. Stepped actually back on the goal line. Ambrose to the 22 or 3 yard line. He is tripped up there by 20. Charles Benton 
And we might say one other thing about that play. As you look at Billy Brewer now trailing for the first time in the game, and that was it was a great toss by Jeff Prince. Right on the money. And we said earlier, Bob, we talked about the fact that it looked like their best chance was over the top. Tennessee had really been playing, overplaying those intermediate routes, re been responding real well to everything underneath. They took advantage of the long ball. First and 10 volunteers, or Ole Miss, at their own 22-yard line. Young has a man open. It's picked off by Tennessee. Terry McDaniel at the 48-yard line. It was intended for Myers. Tennessee looking in the last two or three minutes like the volunteer team we saw last year. Ricky Myers, a guy that can make things happen. J.R. Ambrose inside. He's inside the jam. Excellent job by Terry McDaniel. Doesn't let the receiver clear him, get out on the sideline. He had help from Charles Davis back there, and what a catch. As a freshman, McDaniel was a receiver, and uh, you can see why. Good hands to go with that speed. And thus is number 86, slightly unusual in the defensive secondary. It is first down 10, Tennessee. They are at the 49-yard line of Ole Miss. Tennessee just came from behind to go in front 15-10 for the first time in the game. 12 minutes to go in this ball game. They're swinging. From it's complete to Miller. He is out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Bubba Dickey chasing him out. Excuse me, Bob. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it's I was right. going to say they're swinging from the floor again. They <laughs> ran them both deep, and uh, Francis looking deep, trying to knock Mississippi out. Well, you know, you had mentioned, Tim, speaking of that exact point, you had mentioned that they're, both teams are inviting, to some degrees, the other team to throw the ball. Perhaps the running deep will loosen it some. Yeah. The Tennessee's, Tennessee has had an inability this year of putting people out. They've had them under control the whole game, and the like, Army in Mississippi State let them slip away right at the end. Tennessee leading by five. This is Howard. He gets about four, and down he goes at the 32-yard line. There's Terry McDaniel who came up with a real big interception. Let's look at a scoring summary of this ball game. Ole Miss got on the board first after Tennessee threw an interception and Dentley took it in to score. Then Tennessee came back and got the 27-yard field goal by Reves. That's late in the first quarter. Then in the second quarter, another 39-yarder, and it was a one-point game at that time. In the third quarter, Ole Miss got a 26-yarder from Owens, followed by Tennessee's score. Reveille's a 19-yard, and then Francis to Clint Scales for 38 yards, and we have a 15-10 game. Driving hard for the first down is William Howard. He is close to it. Tackled by Lowe. There's, you see, the remaining summary of scoring in this ballgame. Bob, an, an average game will have uh, defensively 65 plays, offensively 65 plays, something around that, 130, 140 plays in a football game, not counting the, uh, the kicking game. And it's remarkable how few plays determine the outcome of the football game. This is one that's significant. Third down less than a yard. Volunteers at the 27-yard line of Ole Miss. Tennessee uses their third and final timeout. Tennessee is out of timeouts now with 10 minutes, 59 seconds remaining in this game as Francis goes over to talk to the Tennessee coaches. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT. Studios, the upset of the day is brewing in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Minnesota's Ricky Foggy has run five yards for the touchdown and puts them out in front of Michigan. And Oklahoma, just starting the third quarter, leads in Boulder 14-0 for the Orange Bowl. Now let's go back to Jackson, Mississippi. There's the situation. Tennessee with a five-point lead. 10-59 remaining in the game. It is third down, less than a yard volunteers, just outside the 26-yard line of the Rebels of Ole Miss, who are calling for their defensive unit to come up with another big play. On the last third down big play, Tennessee went for a 38-yard touchdown pass and got it. First down, Volunteers, to the 22-yard line of Ole Miss. William Howard, who had been in and out of the doghouse of Johnny Majors, has come in here and played some tough inside running yardage for the Volunteers today. I'll guarantee you is in the doghouse at halftime because of that blitz pickup. Tennessee has been able to move the ball on Ole Miss all day today but still managed to lead only 15 to 10. 
First down, Volunteers. Here's Howard again. Big hole to the 15-yard line. And even a field goal down here by the Volunteers. Of course, they want to get it into the end zone. Even a field goal down here could spread that margin of difference to 18 to 10 and make it a real tough situation for the Rebs. Coming off the field limping just a little bit, number 52, Bubba Dickey. It is second down, about three. Here comes Howard again. Driving inside the 10 to the nine yard line. Moore with a tackle. Good job of reading the blocking by William Howard there, cutting back against the grain. And this is the value of having that size, but again, the speed and quickness of the tailback takes it back in a hurry. Some fullbacks can't make that move, can't make that adjustment when they see it, but Stevon Moore's got a bulldog him down. First and goal from the nine, Tennessee leading 15-10 now. It's Jim Miller. Howard in the backfield. Howard gets the call again. This time only about a yard. When the blue-shirted Rebels bring him down. Initial tackle, 38 Howard Moss. 9-25 and counting, remaining in this game. Well, they want to make sure, Bob, that they get three out of this. They don't want to do anything silly down here. I wouldn't be surprised to see him throwing the ball outside on the fade. It's a safe throw. If it's not caught uh, by the offense, it's usually incomplete. And Tennessee spends a lot of time working on that pattern. Second down eight. Second down goal from the eight. Howard again. Driving to the two and a half or three yard line. And it will be third down goal. Now the Ole Miss Rebels are going to have to dig their trench inside the five-yard line one more time today. Now they're running to the left. You remember in the first half, they concentrated on the right side of the line. Now they're taking it back to the left side of the line with Galbraith and Daryl Smith leading the way, and Howard really struggling, getting extra every extra inch. Ole Miss has not given up a rushing touchdown in 20-plus quarters. Howard on the sweep. Touchdown. Tennessee. Howard has 11 touchdowns rushing this year. 11. And they stick with the left side. Toss it back to William Howard. Jim Miller leading the way. Clears out a blocker. Rodney Lowe moving too much to the side to really get back in it with any force. Touchdown. 21 to 10, Tennessee. 8-11 to go in the ball game. Big point after here by Reves. He's missed a couple this year. Doesn't miss this one. It's 22 to 10, Tennessee, with eight minutes, 11 seconds remaining. For Ole Miss to continue in the hunt for a share of the Southeastern Conference title, they're going to have to come back in eight minutes and 11 seconds into the end zone by Goodlow. He'll touch it down there and it'll come out to the 20-yard line. So Ole Miss has 8 minutes 11 seconds to make up a 12-point deficit. The University of Tennessee has been very poor being outscored by opponents 78 to 39 this season in the fourth quarter. But just as we pointed that out, two fourth quarter Tennessee touchdowns, one of them keyed by the interception by Terry McDaniel. And that was a great play defensively. That wasn't necessarily an offensive mistake, but just a, a great leap and catch by Terry. And now Young is going to have to go to the air, but he's under so much pressure. Hovannik comes after it. He drops the ball, but it was the ground that popped it out. It'll belong to Ole Miss. Also, Mike Whitehead, 91 on the play, but Hovannik was the man who keyed the defensive play as Mark Young tried to find something. Nothing was there. They spotted at the 11-yard line. That little, that little setup roll, and once he gets going that way, it's awful hard for him to get set and throw it back to get rid of it. I like that a lot better the other way, but, uh, you know, obviously coaches know what area the Tennessee defense they're trying to attack, and they're trying to throw it back into the sideline, I think, and where they feel like they've got a, a little thinner core of defensive backs. Second down, 19 from the 11 now. Tennessee may be coming down here. No, they're covering. 
Young is throw. It is complete to Willie Green. Need to block. Doesn't get it. Down he goes. Terry McDaniel, another big defensive play for Tennessee at the 16-yard line. We got Willie Green here. He's going to drag across underneath the zone. Vic Peppers chasing, gets picked off. Now, Willie, take it upfield. Get upfield. You had, you had some space there to get upfield, and they try to get to the sideline and turn the corner. It just takes too long. Great play by McDaniel. Come up, makes a sure tackle. Terry McDaniel is a junior from Saginaw, Michigan, and he's had himself a whale of a wall game today for the Volunteers. Third down, 14 Ole Miss. 6.39 to go in this game. Mark Young under pressure again. Throwing on the run, it is incomplete, intended for Bobby Martin, and Marion Hobby was all over him back there. Number 90 for Tennessee. So they're going to have to get rid of the ball, trailing by 12. It is fourth down, 14. Bill Smith comes in. Thomas Woods will take this Bill Smith punt up near midfield. So Tennessee's going to have excellent field position again, thanks to this Tennessee defensive unit that seems to have found itself today against Ole Miss. At the 49-yard line is where the ball will be spotted, and Tennessee goes on offense. Thomas Woods takes it there. So Tennessee started their last drive at the 49. Or excuse me, their previous drive at the 49. Started their last one shorter than that at the at the Ole Miss 48 after the interception. At the Tennessee 49 now. Leading by 12, 623 to go in the ball game. Well, Tennessee is winless in the conference. 0-3. And that's something in, in the cellar. Well, it looks like they're working their way out of the cellar, and they've got uh, Kentucky left. That'll be a good football game, and they end with Vanderbilt. They have a chance to end up with three victors. First down, 10, volunteers. They'll try to keep it on the ground, most likely here. They've been successful on the ground. That's Howard gets to the 46-yard line of Ole Miss, and it'll keep eating up the clock. So William Howard, who is not starting in this ball game after having some exceptional offensive games, come in here late and rush the ball 10 times for 46 yards and one touchdown. And he is a very good possession ball player if he holds on to the ball. <laughs> yeah. I guess anybody would be a good possession. By possession, I mean a third down, get your first downs. Exactly right. Good, tough inside runner with the quickness to break a long run. But he has had the tendency to uh, leave the ball behind him on occasion. Second down, five, Tennessee. Here comes again. Short of the first down by a couple of yards. Howard goes down to the 43-yard line. Look at this. Incredible upset in the making if it holds on. Remember, it is in the third quarter. Michigan <laughs> ranked second in the nation. And my Mason blue socks are being adjusted even as we speak. They're starting to smoke down there. <laughs> <laughs> Quick to point out that third quarter. It's at Ann Arbor, too. Third down three, Tennessee. Beating the Rebels in their own backyard here today. 22 to 10. 5.09 to go in the ball game. Here's Howard again. He is getting the call after call. I believe he's short of the first down, though. Let's just watch for the spot here. This is going to make a lot of difference where they put that football. He did not get it. It is fourth down and about one yard. What is Tennessee going to decide to do here? Decision to be made. It's a full yard. Check on the sideline over there to see Johnny Majors and the offensive coordinators consulting. It looks like maybe they're going to send that team in. Are they going to? I guess they're going to take a five-yard penalty. The 25-second uh, clock's down to two. They're not even going to attempt to draw Ole Miss offside, <laughs> unless his Ole Miss did earlier. And here comes the punt unit. So there's uh, B422 left, and uh, Rebels trail by 12. <laughs> Looking at Johnny Majors earlier in the game at certain times, you wondered how old can you get in a day <laughs> or, or in the three-hour period. And he's had a week after week like that, and it's been a real rough year for him emotionally, uh, especially when you're coming off such high expectations. Bob Garman is an excellent inside the 20 punter. He'll hit this one about his own 45-yard line. It's the perfect place to try to get the ball down inside the 20. Twin safeties are back. That's 24, Willie Goodloe. And over to his right is 25, Myers. And this one may just sail into the end zone. Penalty markers are down. The ball does go into the end zone. 
Penalty markers are down everywhere. It, this game has not been marred by a lot of violations, infractions. Robert IA, the man in the white hat, refereeing his final game in the SEC before he retires from officiating after 20 years. Twelve men on the field for Ole Miss, a penalty they could ill afford with 4.14 to go in the ball game. That signal when the official puts the ha both hands on top of his head is illegal participation. It's a first down penalty. It will leave the ball in the hands of Tennessee. What a critical time for that mistake. Illegal participation. Defense, too many men on the field. They'll first put it, down. They'll put it at the 31-yard line where it's Tennessee first down, and that could be the nail in the coffin. I think so. And what ha tends to happen in those situations is that uh, somebody gets hurt, and they take him out of the game for a while, and his backup had been playing, and all of a sudden he's back playing, and he doesn't tell the backup, and all of a sudden you got one too many people in there, and costly. Keith Davis and William Howard, they give it a Howard again. Howard gets to the 27, 28 yard line. Jeff Noblin with the tackle. Tennessee just running clock. Tennessee has no timeouts. Ole Miss has two timeouts, but it's a 12 point Tennessee lead. Ole Miss had led at halftime. Scores around. Kentucky holds on to that four point lead over Florida up in Lexington. Third quarter score. And North Carolina State beat Duke 29 to 15 today, coming off their loss last week. In the fourth quarter, Virginia Tech landed on Vanderbilt. That game being played at Blacksburg, Virginia. Second down, seven. Howard again. Just short of the first down. Gets to about the 23-yard line. And Howard has had 14 carries, almost all of them coming in the second half. Clock ticks down to three minutes, 10, and ticking. And this is the time of the year when you start talking about bowls, Bob. And the other thing you start talking about is there are usually some coaching changes being made about this time of the year, or at least in a couple of weeks. And both the coordinators on the, the defensive coordinator here at uh, Old Miss would, I'm sure, be considered for some jobs. I know he's got a history at uh, Louisiana Tech, and they might Smokey. think about him there. Smokey, They've been right? talking to Smokey. And we watch this play develop here. First down, Tennessee. You know, Walt Harris uh, was a defensive back at the University of Pacific and a defensive backfield coach at California. So he's got exposure on both sides of the ball, a quarterback coach at Illinois, and then an offensive coordinator here at Tennessee. So he's got the, uh, the history to, to uh, move into a head coaching position, too. Well, we told you there were eight bowls being represented here today. The Hula Blue Bonnet, Peach Liberty, Sugar Sun, All-America, and All-American and Hall of Fame Bowl. Looking at Ole Miss, Ole Miss will lose this game, barring a miracle here. And their record will fall to 6-3-1. and one. They'll play Mississippi State next week with an opportunity for the seven victories in a bowl bid. William Howard carrying again as Tennessee just runs clock. It's getting down near the two-minute mark now. Tennessee's record will go to four and five on the season. And as we pointed out earlier, University of Tennessee will play Kentucky at Tennessee and then will play Vanderbilt at Nashville and has a good opportunity to have a good opportunity to win all three of those games. Kentucky playing very tough today against Florida. Tennessee could finish with a winning season of six and five, possibly. Tennessee just running it right up the middle now inside the 10. William Howard tackled by Jeff Harrod. Tennessee's rushing yardage now getting up near 200. They have 180 yards rushing to the balls and 185 passing. Ole Miss 131 on the ground and 69 yards in the air today. John Major's looking up at the clock. Let's see, 30 seconds, divide that by 120. <laughs> this game is gonna be over in a minute. Big game coming up right after this one. Not on TV, but here in the station, <laughs> here in the stadium, I should say. And that will be uh, Mississippi State and LSU. LSU, of course, with a four and one mark, and Mississippi State hoping for a bowl with an overall record of six and three. LSU's overall uh, six and two, but a four and one in the conference. Next week, we'll have Ole Miss and Mississippi State right here at Memorial Stadium. And that'll be a game to go to a bowl. That'll be a very significant game. It's always big, but it'll be really significant this year. And we've had an opportunity to see that uh, last couple of years, and it's always fun to watch. No love lost between 
those two schools. It's a recruiting game, too. You know, the recruiting situation in Mississippi is very tough. Two and a half million people total in the state. And three schools going after them, including uh, Alabama and Georgia and Tennessee and some of the other states recruited here, too. They run the ball down with Jim Miller to the five-yard line. Clock at 57 and counting. Executive producer for TBS Sports is Don Ellis. Today's game has been produced by Skip Ellis and directed by John Bishop. Technical director Rick Rayford, associate producer Mike Bogad, and associate director Mark Zeman. And you see the rest of our fine TBS crew. Second down and goal at the Rebel 5. And the clock ticking down to 39, 38 and counting. So we'll get a chance to return to Jackson next Saturday at 12.30 Eastern time. Ole Miss and Mississippi State will play for a bowl opportunity. If Mississippi State were to beat LSU tonight, both teams could have an opportunity to go to the bowl this year from this state for the first time since 1963. Keith Davis denied the goal line. This Rebel defensive unit has just faced run after run after run on the part of Tennessee today. They're not going to let him get into the end zone. Johnny Majors winning the game, one he needed big, winning with class, not taking it in for the for the in-your-face touchdown. The clock ticking down, and this ball game will be over. The Volunteers win 22 to 10, and Tennessee gets their first conference victory this year. Their record goes to three and five. For Ole Miss, their record three and two in the conference and six, three and one overall. This is Super Football Saturday on TNT.